The metaverse is not a new concept to me. I grew up in the metaverse. Coming home from school, I'd rush to this big, clunky Windows machine and wait for it to turn on. I was itching to talk to my real friends, my internet friends. Throughout the years, I found myself embodying different digital forms throughout different digital spaces. I could be a goth vampire on IMVU. I could express myself as a man on Habbo Hotel. I could be this doll who wore couture gowns and had this crazy fashion sense on Star Doll. I could be kawaii as fuck on LOI. Having the freedom to try on different metaphysical hats with the technological insurance of an undo button allowed me to curate and explore my identity for years to come. I grew up in Western Sydney. Life was moving too slow towards the future. Having a couple dozen cyber identities and digital multiverses to jump backwards and forwards from gave me hope and inspiration when things weren't always the way I hoped they would be. Welcome to my metaverse. Whilst I love these digital realms and avatars, it never really seemed like my own. There'd always be locks, limits, paywalls, and data farming. Almost all the metaverses I spent time in when I was younger had all these insane restrictions. Once logging on, you'd be presented with a default white character with a default white hairstyle and two default genders. I'd literally have to save up my pocket money in order to match my skin tone or my hair texture. And even some of these metaverses didn't have the options I needed available. It was disheartening and completely voided the point of a metaverse. My background as an artist was oil painting and traditional art. I started making digital art when I was in my early teens after losing a space to paint. After the devastating loss of my craft, I put importance on having something autonomous that I could do virtually anywhere at virtually any time. Digital art made the most sense to me. I taught myself and it felt important to know the tools to build what I didn't even think was possible. I now iterate cyber dreamscapes and heavenly wastelands populated by Afrofuturistic representations of self, fabricating the ever-evolving narrative of my metaverse. I'm 24 now, and I suffer from borderline personality disorder and agoraphobia, which is the fear of public spaces and social settings. <laughs> Definitely comes in handy when you're talking to a couple thousand fucking people. Uh, but thank you very much, Modern Medicine. Um, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but metaverses help me process my disorders and pierce the veil, reach out and connect when my mind and my body doesn't allow me to. Allowing myself to be a vampire on one side or some crazy hot doll on another, just let me be free when the real world just became too much. When I was 10, I started playing really offbeat Nirvana covers on this guitar, completely plastered with Blink-182 stickers in my bedroom. And that eventually snowballed into me co-founding the notorious anti-colonial death metal band, Dispossessed. Um, Playing in punk and metal bands taught me so much about the DIY scene and how important it is not to rely on a corporate entity to make something happen. 
If you want to make something happen, do it your fucking self. Whether it was playing in venues that weren't really venues, they were back alleys behind a cabbage sorting facility, or dragging our gear kilometers across town in order to have a renegade band practice when the bassist suddenly has come up with a riff. Um, you know, it just taught us to make things happen, claw your way through, carve your own path. Perhaps because our messages and ethos were so urgent, yet necessary for the time and scene, it was always a little bit harder for us. DIY, punk, has been such an important fundamental in the creation of my metaverse. I always say that my art isn't political, whereas my music was. My art was always this safe space, this sanctuary away from the bullshit a black woman like myself has to deal with in the real world. But I've come to the realization that's not totally true. I realized that having to create a digital space in order to feel safe and free was an unintentional, massive political statement in and of itself. I realized that a metaverse should be governed by the person who owns it. Perhaps, unlike the real world, the metaverse can't be colonized. Afrofuturism to me is taking black and Afro cultures and putting it into a positive future focused lens. I think it's important for cultures to have a positive evolution into new technologies, to connect, survive, and evolve, and connect with the new techno-focused millennia. Just like how hip-hop spun out of ancient drumming patterns, perhaps Afrofuturism can be there for us in the future. Last year, Matt and I, along with Soft Senna, P Twigs, and Lydia Cavella, created a 20-minute live motion capture experience called Apotheosis at the Sydney Opera House. Wearing the very same accent suit that I'm wearing today, Lydia performed a beautiful dance in front of 80 people. We created Apotheosis to show that a metaverse can be enjoyed and shared by all for the purposes of art. In 10 years, I'd love to see everyone have their own digital space, to have their own metaverse. It's become so very clear to me that corporations have ultimate access to our data through our input, sadly, across all channels. But I think it's high time that we start to govern cyberspace and take our power back over our digital identities. Whilst it's impossible for corporations not to have a space in the metaverse, I don't know, perhaps it might be fun for us to, you know, grab a meta Happy Meal in a meta McDonald's with a friend across the world. Might, might kind of be tasty, but maybe my taxes might be a bit more interesting if my accountant builds out a tax metaverse, who knows? But, you know, we can take our power back over cyberspace and still make it a fun, bright and beautiful place for all. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk and thanks for visiting my metaverse.